looking at our world from a theological perspective. This is the Theology Central Podcast, making Theology Central. Good evening, everyone. It is Saturday, September the 16th, 2023. It is currently 8.26 p.m. Central Time, and I'm coming to you live from the Theology Central studio located right here in Abilene, Texas, and I need your help. I do. I I really do need your help. Now, the original idea was I was going to ask you a question, not because I needed your help, but I was going to say, hey, here's this text. Do you think this article that's using this text is using it in a correct way? More kind of like a hermeneutical quiz, right? More like a, a hermeneutical challenge for you to figure out. But then when I was looking at the article, they make a statement about this concept and I am baffled by the statement. I don't, I don't have a clue. I was like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is, is that, is that, is that something? How, where, where, where was I? I must have missed this in Bible college or seminary or Bible institute. Somewhere I wasn't paying attention. So I need you to help me find the answer. Okay. So. All of you theologians, right? Everyone who listens to this program, you're a theologian. Even if you don't listen to this program, you're a theologian. Because if you claim to be a Christian, you should be a theologian because theology is the study and knowledge of God, which is what we should all do. But you should also be a a theologian in the sense that you are studying the word of God and doctrine and theology. So there is a theological issue here that I don't know what to do. So here's what happened. I was like, okay, I got a little, there's something I have scheduled I want to do for fun, for entertainment at 9 p.m. tonight, the correct time, Texas time. And I was like, well, but before I do that, maybe I could get one more thing done for the podcast, one more, you know, offer a little bit more spiritual food for people on a Saturday evening. And not only for them, it helps me use, you know, you know, even if it's only 30 minutes to get my mind on something. So I'm like, okay, all right, I'll stop what I'm doing. I'll go upstairs. So I came upstairs to the studio and I'm like, you know, I need to do, I need to work on second John. I really need to do work on second John because that whole thing we did on sanctification in second John, that was a mess. I, I tried to do something with it, but I'm like, I need to do something with second John. And I'm like, all right, well, trying to do a book overview and, and that's going to turn into a series. I don't want to do that right now. And so I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And I look down on my table here. I would like to call it a desk or I would like to call it the studio. I don't know what, but it, it, there's nothing fancy. It's just a table here, a fold out table. Yeah, this is, you know, high tech stuff going on here. But laying on the table is the July the 7th, 2023 issue of the Sword of the Lord. Remember when we reviewed the Sword of the Lord conference and I told everyone to get a subscription to the paper? Remember I told everyone? Okay, so this is the July 7th, 2023 issue. I bought some books from them, a book called, where where is it? I have it right here. A book called A Dozen Diamonds from Daniel that I want to do something with. I do, I do, I do. Um, So it's sitting here. And when I ordered the book, they sent me an older issue of the Sword of the Lord before my subscription started. So it's sitting here on the the table and it's, it's kind of, it's folded in half. And so you have the top part, which shows the Sword of the Lord, July 7th, 2023, right? And you have kind of that. And then you flip it over because it's folded in half and you have an, an article here that is entitled something. I'm not going to give you the name of the title right now. I'm not going to give you the name of the title. But immediately, I what caught my eye wasn't so much the title. I'm like, okay, I could probably do something with that. But it was the scripture. Because they utilize Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Now, I don't know if you remember, we spent 70 hours in the book of Jeremiah, right? So, I was like, okay, I'm going to read the art, the verses again, even though I've already read them multiple times. I've taught them, but I'm going to go read it again because I want to know how this subject that they have for the title of this, how this connects to Jeremiah chapter three, verses one through three. I'm perplexed, but that's not even where the truly, the true mystery begins. This, this is what I thought was going to be like, Hey guys, does this verse really fit the title of this article? 
what do you think? Email me and I'll check it after I'm done doing what I want to be doing this evening, right? It was kind of kind of like just a fun little quick thing. But then when I actually started reading the first paragraph, I'm like, wait a minute, that's the real mystery. But let's at least do the first part. Are you ready? Here we go. Jeremiah chapter three, verse one, the prophet of Jeremiah bringing his message. And this is what it says. Verse one, they say, Jeremiah chapter three, verse one, they say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Now, he's taking this idea of, of unfaithfulness in a physical way, and then he, he flips it, the idea to unfaithfulness in a spiritual way. It's amazing how, how much attention gets to maybe a physical unfaithfulness, right? Everyone will talk about that, but nobody seems that bothered or concerned about our spiritual unfaithfulness, unfaithful, because whether you like it or not, you have many lovers, and so do I. You say, no, I love God. (laughs) You may love him, but you love a lot of other things. And I dare say you love them more. And guess what? I'm right there with you. All right. Listen, verse two, it says, lift up thine eyes unto the high places and see where thou hast not been lying with. All right. Hey, look at all the high places. And since you've been lying down there, you've been unfaithful. You've been committing spiritual adultery in the ways hast thou set, um, in the ways hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness. And thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and thy wickedness. Therefore, the showers. Now, here is the key verse that's going to be used in this article. But all of this is about basically Judah, their spiritual idolatry. And it says, because of your spiritual idolatry, therefore, the showers have been withholden and there hath been no latter rain. And thou hast a whore's forehead. Thou refusest to be ashamed. Hey, because of your spiritual adultery, the rain has stopped, but you are unashamed. You're bold. You're just like, I'm going to come, I'm going to keep lying down for my spiritual lovers and I don't care. I'm not ashamed. But he says, because of this, the, the latter rain is, is being withholden. Now I would understand that. And I think you would understand that. That's literal rain. And in, in the rainy season, when it should rain, it's literally not raining. There's nothing figurative here. There, it's just talking about rain. Right? That, that's what I would think. Okay, well, Sword of the Lord, July 7th, 2023. They quote, th- this article begins with Jeremiah 3, 1 through 3. And then guess what? This is entitled, Why No Revival? What? Why no revival? How can you write an article about revival and quote Jeremiah chapter three, verses one through three? Like, where are you going to go with this? And here's how the article begins. Thinking caps on. You ready? The early and latter rains were symbols of God's blessing upon his people. But because of sin, he had withheld those rains. Okay. Now he says it's a symbol. All right. Maybe it served as a symbol. I don't even like using the word symbol. It, you could say it was a blessing from God. Rain is a blessing from God. And he, and he, and, and he gives that grace and that mercy and that blessing to the just and the unjust, right? But we do know if we go back into Deuteronomy, there were clear, clear promises. If you obey me and follow me, then the land's going to be this and your crops are going to grow and there's going to be, everything's going to be, if you don't, there'll be curse and there'll be no rain, et cetera, et cetera. So the fact is they are disobeying and God is withholding the, holding the rain just as if it is. It's not a symbol necessarily. It's just a fact, right? Okay. But all right, if you want to make it a symbol, okay, because they're still acknowledging the literal rain. I still don't know what that has to do with revival. All right. That's my real question. So my question is, does Jeremiah 3, 1 through 3, him withholding the rain, does that have anything to do with revival and why there's no revival? I don't know if, if there's any way to utilize it for that, but, but I wasn't prepared for this. Here's the thing that really 
Now I've got to figure this out. Now I got to figure this out. I got to figure this out. I'm not going to sleep until I find this answer. And I don't even know where to begin to find this answer. He goes on to say, it is not my purpose to discuss the dispensational meaning of the early and latter rains. Wait, 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 wait. Let me read that again. It is not my purpose to discuss the dispensational meaning of the early and latter rains. Now, either he thinks that his listening audience is so familiar with the dispensational interpretation of the early and latter rains, he has to immediately tell them, hey guys, we're not going to be looking at this passage from the perspective of how dispensationalism interprets the early and latter rain. Now, I'm baffled and perplexed by that because I don't have a clue what he's talking about. I have no clue there. Now, we're studying dispensationalism. You see how all of my podcasts start connecting and putting together what I always hope is a cool puzzle. I don't know if it ever does, but there's always one piece connects to the other. But I need your help tonight. What is the dispensational interpretation of the early and latter rains? So then I thought, oh, wait, we've got the, we've got the dispensational book, right? We've got the 1917 Schofield Study Bible because we're using it in our study of dispensationalism. I know what I'll do. I'll run. Well, I didn't have to run. I had to reach down, pick up my Schofield 1917 edition, right? This is the anniversary edition reprinted to be like, just like it would have looked like as close as possible to what it would have looked like in 1917. And then I looked and I'm like, okay, there's the verse. And there's no notes here at all. No notes. So then I'll look and see, does he have like a cross reference here to the latter rain? There's nothing. There is, there's literally nothing. I'm like, well, if Schofield didn't deal with it, where, where did the dispensational interpretation of the early and latter rain arise? Who was the first one to promote it? And what is is it, does anyone know what is the dispensational interpretation of the early and latter rain? Now, I want to know. Now, I'm going to go ahead and read this just to show you what he did with this. So really, we're going to be we're going to be left with two mysteries tonight. The first one, I think, is pretty simple. The second one, I don't know. But here we go. So let me read this entire paragraph. The early and latter rains were symbols of God's blessing upon his people. But because of sin, he had withheld these those rains. It is not my purpose to discuss the dispensational meaning of the early and latter rains. Instead, I approach it from the standpoint that the latter rains speak of revival upon God's people. We will see that some, uh, we will see some season, some reasons the showers have been withholden or why no revival. Now, look, no, I, okay. I'm going to read that again slowly because I get, I'm getting frustrated. I'm getting really, 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 really frustrated. Okay. And I'm trying not to get frustrated. But I get so upset because when you deal with dispensationalism, the argument is we take the scriptures literally. We take the scriptures literally. Well, the person preaching this, clearly a dispensationalist, clearly is preaching to an audience that he thinks is so familiar with dispensationalism that they even know the dispensational meaning of the early and latter rain. I don't even know that. Okay. But then guess what he does? Look, I'm going to read this again. All right. Instead, I approach it from the standpoint that the latter rain speak of revival upon God's people. How can you say the latter rain here speaks of revival upon God's people? This is talking about physical rain. You are spiritual. I'm just going to be blunt. Whores. And therefore, God is withholding physical rain. How is this now that this stands for revival? And so we're going to see some reasons the showers have been withholding. So you're going to go to Jeremiah about specific things that were specific to them and then somehow apply it to uh, uh, what? What is that? Is that that that's not an is that an allegorical approach? Is that a literal? What what is that hermeneutic? I don't know what that hermeneutic that hermeneutic is. Just take the scriptures and do whatever you want with them because we can do whatever we want with them because we are really our own authority. But uh, but I digress. I digress. I digress. So here is my question. It's twofold, right? Now while I'm going to go watch, 
college, college football. I'm just going to be honest with you. That's what I'm going to go do. You can tell me that I'm committing spiritual idolatry, but that's what I'm going to go do. While I'm doing that, I need you to be spiritual and I need you to answer two questions. Does Jeremiah 3, 1 through 3, have anything to say about why there is no revival and give us reasons for God withholding revival upon us or our nation or your church or my church or your country or my country? I don't think it does. And secondly, I need you to go full-blown detective here. I need you to become like, I need you to become full-blown detective. I need you to find me the dispensational interpretation of the early and latter rains. And I need you to send me the link that you find, because I'm assuming you're going to do a Google search. I haven't had a chance to do that, but I need you to email it to me quickly. (laughs) Newsif at yahoo.com. Newsif at yahoo.com. That's newsif at yahoo.com. If you find it, and if the game turns out to just be a blowout and it's not even exciting and Maybe then around halftime, I'll come right back up those steps and I and t- let me know in the email if I can use your name, because if I, if, if I can, I'm going to give the name of the person who sends it to me and say so and so. And you can give me where you're listening from. And I has sent me an article that seems to trace the origin of the so-called dispensational interpretation of the early and latter rain. Here is the source that we have. We don't know if it's primary, secondary. We don't know where it is. And then we'll give the information and we'll give that interpretation because I'm sorry, I'm super curious. And I don't, if, if there is a clearly dispensational interpretation of early and latter rain, I want to know what it is. Because if you say, what is your interpretation of early and latter rain? Physical rain. <laughs> okay. Like literal rain that came in this part of the season or this part of the season. It came early or it came in the later part, the end. And God withheld that rain because of their disobedience, which fits perfectly with the promise made, sometimes referred to as the Palestinian covenant. All right. Uh, Schofield refers to it as the Palestinian covenant. It's the Palestinian land covenant. Go in, If you go into the land and do this, there'll be blessing. There'll be rain. It'll be fruitful. It'll be wonderful. And if you go in and you're disobedient, there's going to be drought and it's going to be horrible and there's going to be pain, suffering and death. Well, they're disobeying and guess what's happening? The rain has stopped. I don't think there's any allegorical anything there at all. All right. I I, want to turn. I want to turn because it tells me that this article is continued on page four of the uh, Sword of the Lord. But I I, I want to read it. I want to read it. I want. Don't you want to read it? I want to read. I want to read it. Don't you want to read it? Oh, you, okay, you don't. All right. Okay. Well, I'm. It's right here. Do you see? Okay. I'm so, I'm, nope. We're gonna stop. Sorry. Can't. I can't. We gotta stop. And, but I do want to see what it has to. Obviously, I would keep reading if he was going to give us the dispensational interpretation of the early and latter rains. But I think his. I want to just see how he s- takes Jeremiah three and makes it about God withholding revival for us. Yeah, there we go. All right. I'm going to stop. There's kind of, hey, you know what? You know what this proves? Proves what you can accomplish when you have a studio <laughs> upstairs in your house, right? You you can go live whenever you want. You can you can just do so much. And it, I mean, I know this is not part the the purpose of this broadcast, but I just have, I've just got to ask yourself, I mean, this is just the question I'm always pondering. And I know it's nobody else seems to find the question that revolutionary or that interesting, but I think it's an important question. I'm here in my house, live on the air. We've talked already today. We see we've done a Bible quiz, right? I've given you things to do. We've talked about Revelation chapter three. I think we've done a very good job on that. Now we've talked about Jeremiah chapter three. And I want you to know that all that's happening right here from this studio. But just think of the cost of operating this. Even if people were to give, even if people were people to give, the cost here would be, the overhead here would be way small. And considering right now, well, you're in your house and I'm in here in my studio, there are these huge buildings called churches. And I want you to think how much money it takes to keep those things operating. To hire the people who work it, 
to pay those property taxes, the electricity, and the, many, most of those buildings are just sitting there completely empty tonight. Now they will be, tomorrow people will show up, right? But then, and then how much content, how much content do those churches actually put out? It's just sometimes weird because just someone with a microphone and a Bible, you literally can almost broadcast around the clock. And even if even if people gave to the podcast, it would be the the overhead for maintaining a podcast is like it's like a drop of water compared to an ocean. Like that that whole thing just sometimes baffles me because you'll you'll, you'll be driving around and you drive past the church and there's no one there. It's just empty. They're not. No one's in there producing content, recording nothing. It's just empty, and then it's empty, and it's empty, and it's empty. You think so? They produce basically. You know, one major sermon, maybe two sermons a week. And then maybe they do some small groups that in most cases don't even meet inside the building. It's sometimes it's just weird, but all right. There you have it. Now go to work. I need you to go to work. Go to work. Come on. What are you doing? No, 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 no. You turn off your television. Come on now. Don't be unspiritual. You go find me the dispensational meaning of the early and latter rain. All right. Thanks for listening. You can email me. Newsif at yahoo.com. If you don't want me to give your name or where you're listening from, please say, state that in the email because sometimes people get really upset. They'll email me and I'll be like, hey, so here's this email someone sent me and I'll go through it and they'll be like, I didn't tell you to read my email. And I'm like, it's not like anybody's going to know who you are based off reading the email, but okay. I try not to do that. All right. Newsif at yahoo.com. Newsif at yahoo.com. Oh, man, I want the answer. I want the answer now. Okay. I just don't know where to look. I just don't know where to look. Other, I guess, than doing a Google search. Probably easy to find on Google, I'm assuming. All right. Newsif at yahoo.com. Newsif at yahoo.com. Everyone have a wonderful night. We'll talk soon. God bless.